Everyone, this is a call to actions. I'm your host, Bobby Lee Vaughn Jr. And today we're going to be covering some subjects that most people will never cover because they don't have access to the documents. Uh, there was a, a document that came across my, uh, my email uh, because I subscribe to um, very in-depth scientific research uh, documents and journals. Uh, this one being in Nature, Machine Intelligence. And the document is entitled Biological Research and Self-Driving labs in deep space supported by artificial intelligence and I have here with me another member of a call to actions his name is Chris Bardu and he also has his own podcast as well Chris, uh, first of all, before we do this deep dive into this document, and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to be doing a document review. I'm I'm doing an audio document read, kind of like an audio book, but uh, an audio document. I I don't know if if that is some is something that really exists out there in the nature of podcasts or. Or really anywhere um, afoot quite yet but uh, something that I want to start doing um, in the a call to actions unclassified series and something you, you guys can look out for uh, all the subscribers of a call to actions the uh, audio document series called unclassified where I will give you an audio document on unclassified and declassified documents. I, I don't delve into the sphere of secret or classified documents. I don't do that. Uh, I get formerly secret documents declassified legally and in the future, what I'll be doing is uh, reading those to those that are interested, <clears throat> especially in uh, cold, the uh, America's Cold War um, gaseous diffusion plants uh, that process uranium. Um, but uh, but here here today uh, we're we're doing a deep dive into the the deep web, as they call it. Uh, these documents that are kept behind either firewalls or paywalls typically or documents that don't show up in normal search engines it's called the deep web uh, again this document is called biological research and self-driving labs in deep space supported by artificial intelligence and today I have with me uh, another call to actions member Chris Bardu, if you would like to introduce yourself real quick, and uh, let's get this uh, this audio document rolling. How are you, Bardu? Yeah, let's get this party started, man. This topic is batshit. This is awesome. Uh, when I first started reading a lot of these uh, documents you sent over to me, there was, uh, you know, first off, I have to kind of think of, like, you know, what's their purpose behind the research? Like, what's the end result? What is it that mm -hmm. they want? You know, what is it that they're looking for at the end of this? And I think what they want is they want a fully functioning person to just step outside of an aircraft in an outer space without a suit and be able to function perfectly. That, what you gathered from this? That's exactly uh, the research that that these outfits are attempting to do. Yes, yes. 
So, uh, and, yes, and, what, what is what is the mind with that is, you know, uh, a lot of that would be. Uh, for, well, first thing that comes to mind for me would be, for one, you know, there's a lot of things we can do with the human body that we're aware of. But when you introduce AI, you begin to have more of a broader aspect of possible contingent plans that you're going to be able to use to be able to make this actually feasible and it's and unbelievably it is actually working uh there's from what i've read in this research here i mean there are you know for for me personally be ethical concerns as far as you know you know what they're doing about this sort of stuff you know i mean you know that they're using animals uh, microorganisms, uh, single-celled organisms, you know, you have to look at the homeostasis of uh, the cell, that you're, the cellular state of the, uh, of, the, of the organism you're looking at, it, whether it be a rat or rabbit or, you know, an amoeba, you know, they want to see how all that reacts in outer space to be able to, to do something like this. And you think that, I mean, they're using AI, so it. Uh, I'm sure that that you know, the the management standards to ensure that that AI readiness and the open source data is available for everybody to read. You know, but you want to make sure that there's no ethical concerns, and I don't think AI has the ability to make an ethical decision. Obviously, you have you have. Uh a deep level of research and knowledge uh, based on based on your research so let's just go ahead and begin no i'm a circus monkey i don't know jack stuff about this i'm just i was a lab tech for a while you know and the, the closest thing i've done in a laboratory is probably draw blood you know maybe put it a centrifuge and maybe make slides and read for a cbc to check someone's white blood cell count you know but to go into like depth with, um DNA sequencing, that's a whole different animal. <clears throat> but right. I can give it a whip. Right. Because this does seem interesting. Right. I like to see if they're going to put a pit boy on this guy and figure right. out. Right. Well. Yeah. So, <laughs> like, without further delay, um, um, let me go ahead and say there are many outfits that are that are involved in biological research and self-driving labs or autonomous labs in deep space supported by artificial intelligence um i'm gonna go ahead and go to the go ahead and go back to the document here we have some outfits outside of uh, uh, cleveland cleveland ohio and there's even one out in birmingham alabama where where you're from let me let me have a look real quick if I can do it real quick um, the, okay out of Cleveland Cleveland Ohio if there's anyone out there <clears throat> we're talking about NASA and synthetic biology research laboratories uh, in combination to recreate man that can live in space without a space vessel uh, though it appears as if they're using the guys within the document that uh, not a space vessel more like a protective layer like an astronaut's outfit um, let me go ahead and say let me go ahead and, and admit the one that's over here in Cleveland it's called the human research program Cross-Cutting Computational Modeling Project. The Cross-Cutting Computational Modeling Project of NASA out of John H. Glenn Research Center in Cleveland, Ohio. Okay, that is just one of about 150 different sites located within our own jurisdiction that are attempting to bioengineer and recreate man to go in space. So without further delay, I'm gonna go ahead and give the audio document. And Chris, uh, feel free to, to chime in at any time because that's what, that's what we're doing. We're gonna read uh, this audio document, this hard copy as you can hear it. 
hear that paper? All right, you hear that? All right, and we're gonna give our, our own ethics review on this. All right, if you don't have any more comments, Chris, I'll go ahead and- uh, Go right ahead, bro. Let's hear this. All right, okay. From Nature's Machine Intelligence Division, it's a scientific journal, scientific research division, that, that scientists uh, donate their research projects to to get to get them published in different uh, different outfits of uh, scientific literature. Uh, Nature Machine Intelligence, Biological Research, and Self-Driving Labs in Deep Space Supported by Artificial Intelligence. Brought to you by a huge list of sites and scientific labs. <laughs> space biology research. Space biology research aims to understand fundamental space flight effects on organisms. Develop foundational knowledge to support deep space exploration and ultimately bioengineer spacecraft bioengineer spacecraft how can you bioengineer spacecraft interesting and and habit habitats to stabilize the ecosystem of plants crops microbes animals and humans for sustained multiplanetary life i'm not against growing plants or crops in space um anyways to advance these aims the field leverages experiments, platforms, data, and model organisms for both space-borne and ground analog studies. As research is extended beyond low Earth orbit, experiments and platforms must be maximally automated, light, agile, and intelligent to accelerate knowledge discovery. Here we present a summary of decadal recommendations from a workshop organized by NASA on artificial intelligence, machine learning, and modeling applications to offer solutions to these space biology challenges. The integration of artificial intelligence into the field of space biology will deepen the biological understanding of space flight effects, facilitate predictive modeling and analytics, support maximally automated and reproducible experiments, and efficiently manage space-borne data and metadata, ultimately to enable life to thrive in deep space that's the synopsis any comment there at all chris before i go on to the to the rest i'm still waiting to get into the juicy part here okay let's go <laughs> holy moly again this uh this document was originally uh this research project was originally submitted after years of of writing study and writing uh, in 2021 it was submitted on December 23rd of 2021 this is two years ago okay it was accepted by nature um, scientific right machine intelligence in on January 23rd 2023 so here just a couple months ago it was accepted and released to the public two years after the entire uh, document was actually created. And just think about all the thoughts and the ideas that are going through the, uh, the scientists' heads while they're actually uh, putting in words into the document that they believe the public should have access to. So what's really going on? Uh, has it happened? Has it already happened? And they're actually... This is something they've been doing for a long time. Right, right. <clears throat> like since the 50s, I believe. AI labs is like, yeah. Yeah, I looked at the documents that you sent over to me and I was doing some research on them. 
And uh, I believe it was the second one you sent here. It was, uh, of course, the, the Manfred E. Kleins and uh, Kleins and Klein, C L Y N E S and Klein. Kleins and Klein, I don't know. Yeah, what, Klein, what yeah, Klein and Kleins, right? Yeah, yeah why they. From yeah, the 1960s. They, two peas in a pot. Yeah. yeah. So the Dynamic Simulation Lab it was out of University of Melbourne, and now it's out of University of Illinois, Chicago. And it looks like they, they're they doing pretty much the same kind of thing. So they work on a simulation of multi-body railroad vehicles, uh, track dynamics, looks like heavy machinery. So, so uh, large uh, deformation dynamics and control, uh, and of course, you know, robotics. It sounds like they're, they're doing the same kind of research that, um, that uh, Bigelow is doing. Robert Bigelow. Uh, the guy who used to, yeah, the guy who used to own Skinwalker Ranch. Well, um, Robert Bigelow, you know, there, there, yeah, Robert Bigelow, yeah. there, there are actual uh, Bigelow aerospace patents for space vehicles to take to take humans to to the moon, like one. Oh, sure. oh seriously, there there is a a patent, a Bigelow aerospace patent for a one man vessel. It looks like a lighthouse, actually. If you look at the uh, the original drawing on the patent, uh, looks like a lighthouse that takes a single man uh, to the moon. So the whole the whole Robert Bigelow things, uh, you know, that's that's a different story for a different day. We could talk about that some other time, man. But yeah, dude, I want one of those. All right, all right. To get back to the document and the audio, the audio document here on biological research, self-driving labs, and deep space supported by artificial intelligence. Um, all right. Two years later, here we are. Um, space biology research focuses on answering fundamental mechanistic questions about how molecular cellular tissue and whole organismal life whole talking about whole organisms um, responds to to the space environment biological stressors of space flight include ionizing radiation altered gravitational fields accelerated day night cycles confined isolation Hostile closed environments, distance and duration from Earth, planetary dust regolith, and extreme temperatures and atmospheres. Moreover, space flight stressors are probably compounded and amplified with increasing time and space and distance from Earth. Because the human being, the organic human being, is made to live on Earth, you know. Uh, anyway, understanding, predicting. All right. And you got to think of the people who are writing this and how they choose. They choose their words. They, right. they choose their words precisely, just as any anyone who's writing uh, an article or um, or anything, you know, one chooses one's words. Understanding, predicting, and mitigating these changes at all levels of biology is increasingly important given the deep space exploration goals of NASA towards cis, lunar, and Mars missions. Ultimately, the goal of space biology research is to extend beyond understanding of how extraterrestrial conditions affect life to enable bioengineered solutions for sustained life on the moon, Mars, and during deep space missions beyond low Earth orbit, or what they call LEO. In this review, we present findings from the workshop on artificial intelligence and modeling for space biology, organized by NASA in June of 2021, which sought to map the roles of artificial intelligence, machine learning, and biological computational modeling in the field of space biology research over the next decade. 
On the basis of mathematical principles and computer science, AI and machine learning methodology trains, algor trains algorithms to predict outcomes and probabilities of interest. Here's where we run into a big problem. On the, base, on the basis of mathematical principles and computer science, this is based on what humans so far in math and science have been able to come up with on Earth, on a terrestrial environment, and very limited, very limited low Earth uh, studies. They're training, they say here, on the basis of math, and computer science, AI and machine learning methodology, methodology trains algorithms, algorithms or a brain of computers to predict outcomes and probabilities of interest. So the machine or the vessel that they're going to be putting these potential humans into is is will could potentially just be thinking for itself, right? Based off of our limited human understanding, right? I believe so. I mean, they're they're using AI to create the thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that AI would want to create something more like itself. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And then, oh man. Okay, dude, we've only scratched the surface here. Um, a parallel review article reviews the workshop participants recommendations regarding the roles of AI and machine learning for astronaut eco ecosystem and precision space health when you're in space um, well what is space health um, I'm pretty sure like back in the 60s you know uh, Klein and Klein's um, space health they were actual actual implanted devices that would release certain chemicals into the human body uh, based off of based off of certain uh, sensors right like these sensors well, they do say they on this one article they do say they have uh, pills that you can take it will, that will affect the homeostasis of, of the human body um, but yeah not dramatically to the point to where it can uh, be able to metabolize like it should in a vacuum-like space. Uh, they talked about how they would uh, eventually possibly replace the lungs altogether, uh, create uh, uh, some way, uh, even changing the pigment of the skin to where it will be able to handle the effects and cold of the outer vastness of space right. and the radiation and the sunlight from the sun. Whoa. So they factored in all of this stuff. Yeah. Just to, I mean, and I wonder how much of our tax dollars are being spent on this kind of, I did some research here. It's yeah. 370000 to $2.3 million uh, daily. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, you spend that kind of money if you're really serious about accomplishing something. Um, Correct. But they would have to dramatically change the human body to be able to uh, withstand the effects from space. I mean, they would even have to change how the blood flow is going throughout the body because uh, if it gets over sixty. HGs, you know, your blood begins to boil. Holy moly! And, uh, mm -hmm. and, and a, in a space vacuum environment, it's instantaneous. Yeah. So they would have to figure that out as well. Yeah. Well, yeah. I just want I want to figure out how they're going to poop. I mean, if you're going to be out there in outer space <laughs> for days on end, you can. Goodness. If you're able to step out of a spaceship naked or just like wearing like a pair of boxer shorts, and you're like, ah, oh, this is nothing. <laughs> You know, there has to be a way for, um, you know, it's, you have to take that into consideration. Yeah, they would. So Jokes aside, I mean, seriously, that's a thing that they would have to worry about. No, they, I know. they said that even it might, uh, like it might, the human body might be uh, fixed to the point to where 
they will even have to do that. And if they do, it'll be reused for something yeah, else. Yeah, recycled. The hell are they going to use that for? Seriously. Oh. Like, like yeah. would you want your own fecal matter to be, like, divvied up and recycled through, throughout your own the only, systems? The only thing on. I can think this of... Is is this is NASA. This is NASA's thinking. Dude, what was that? The only thing I could think of that fecal matter could be reused for if there was a system in the body to like re-metabolize feces the only thing it would be would be like nutrition but all, all feces is is dead skin cells and uh the waste products that you're not using anyway right that's kind of <clears throat> like uh the human centipede kind of thing going on. I don't understand Goodness how they're going to be able to do something like Holy that. Holy moly. But yeah. I'm not a scientist. You're right. You're right. I was a degree. You know, I'm not an AI computer that's putting all this together all at once. No. I just kind of look at this. Right. And, and that's called. step back and I'm like. Yeah. And. I'm going to have it, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And this is uh, Chris Bardu, the host of Secret Circus podcast. Check them out on all the podcast networks. Uh, Secret. I haven't been on Wisdom in a while. My yeah. computer correct. That no, we're uh, we're live streaming on uh, on Wisdom, um, but you know we're we're doing the hard drive podcast thing on uh, other platforms. I'll get it out. I'll get I'll get it out within a couple of days. But what we were just talking about is NASA's version of space health. And if you're just joining us, uh, we're we're reviewing a document that was just released by. Nature's Machine Intelligence, uh, a review article that was re that was released two years after it was submitted. It was just released two months ago. It was uh, received by Machine Intelligence um, on December twenty third, two thousand twenty one, called "Biological Research and Self Driving Labs in Deep Space." supported by artificial intelligence and we're just giving you our own ethics review on this sickening area of research and development all right i'm going to continue here all right well i'm i'm a, i'm gonna go back to the last sentence and then i'll and then i'll start with the next paragraph a parallel review article reviews the workshop participants' recommendations regarding the roles of AI and machine learning for astronaut ecosystems and precision <laughs> precision space health. That's where they divvy up all of your your uh, your your crap or your uh, excretions and pump them back into your body. Um, as oh, in the name of in the name of space flight, right? All right. It's going to be in one of them three-lettered organizations or four. Oh, my work. goodness. <laughs> oh, man. They're already feeding us a load of theirs. They may as well regurgitate and feed us our own from that time to time. Sheesh. Well, well, I guess kind of in the same sense, you know, uh, we're refeeding them our opinion on their crappy um, research and development ideas. Anyways, going to the next paragraph. Workshop participants highlighted three main near-term focus areas, which will be discussed in the following sections. First, fundamentally transformative approaches leveraging AI and machine learning will be needed to automate. Let me say that again. First, fundamentally transformative approaches leveraging AI and machine learning will be needed to automate biology experiments in settings below low earth orbit okay and these are settings below or sorry holy crap I, d I just misread a word that says beyond yeah yeah First, fundamentally transformative approaches leveraging AI and machine learning will be needed to automate biology experiments in settings beyond LEO or low Earth orbit. And this is beyond low Earth orbit or the spacecraft that, that, that we're allowed to see. Okay? Automate biology experiments. And we're talking about a research project by Sandia National Laboratories and, and 150 other outfits throughout the US that want to create autonomous machines that go beyond low Earth orbit 
and do biological experiments on organisms on Earth in order to explore space, okay? And this, these machines are autonomous, doing biological research on Earth organisms. All right. These approaches must facilitate the generation and analysis of reproducible data sets that incorporate multiple types of measurements to achieve a comprehensive characterization of organismal responses or testing the effects to a variety of extraterrestrial conditions. Such data sets can then be used for robust predictive modeling of space flight responses at every biological level. And every single biological level, Chris, that includes the that includes the human brain, doesn't it? Right? Oh, I'd imagine so. Yeah. yeah. Holy moly. And it, right now we don't have uh well there was some doctors in Russia that tried to do a brain transplant in a monkey. I mean, it did survive for about maybe 10 minutes or a couple hours or so, but it died shortly after. So to create this uh, this superhuman that I'm assuming we're talking about, superhumans that can just walk out into the outside the ship, go get something and come right back in with no problems, uh, the brain would have to be, that's one of the biggest organs of the body that we'd have to uh, protect, I would think. Mm -hmm. I mean, now don't get misconceptual. Like, I, I think I need to kind of talk about like what would happen to you. The seriousness. Well, okay, so you most common misconception is that space is freezing cold. Well, it's not. It, the, the, the space itself doesn't have a temperature. In thermodynamic terms, temperature is a function of heat or energy in a given amount of matter and space. By definition, it has no mass. Uh, Basically, right, because it's infinite. You'd live about 15 seconds. So to kind of give people out there an idea of what they're trying to shoot for out there, you have to kind of have an idea of what space will do to your body if you just step out there yeah. as off. You would, uh, your lungs would explode. Your blood would boil. And you wouldn't freeze to death, but you would asphyxiate. And so this is very complicated procedure and I know they're spending millions of dollars to figure this out but I do believe from the documents you said that they have already this AI mm -hmm. has already determined that this could actually be possible hmm. I agree with you and you know we right now we have to come to a an opinion on if we agree with this type well, of... Well, let's see an ethical situation. You know, like, what's the ethical situation right. here? Um, you know, it would have to be somebody that would want to go through that kind of process. You know, they would have to have... The, this would have to be something... Because if they came out publicly with something like this, there would be an, definitely an uproar about it. You know, right. it, would, it would have to be something done on the down low. Uh, Definitely. So where no one knows about it. Right. For them to be able to do unethical things to figure things out. Kind of like the uh, Nazi human experimentation uh, mm -hmm. where they would freeze people in temperatures and warm them back up and test the results of, um, of uh, frostbite. And that's actually how we learned about frostbite was from unethical situations that occurred in these concentration camps back in 1944 to 46. Yeah. So, um, so which, is, by the way, we snatched up all those Nazis, and one of them actually worked for NASA. Right. And he was a hero. And they did teach us about his past whenever he was in, the, in there doing that in the, uh, but the, the 60s and 70s. But the unethical research and development that potentially could be occurring... Um, even within the jurisdiction of the U.S., um, is quite high. Um, you know, I think they might be gathering all their research before they actually start human trials. I mean, we they have we, to be they have to be precise, and I mean, you have all these laboratories, like you mentioned, hundreds of them across the U.S. working on this. 
I mean, look at the state it. would be they would have their ducks in a row before they actually brought a person in to actually start working on them. And it would be not just one, but probably a group of people. And potentially before they even released a research paper to the public, right? Oh, yeah. Definitely. And let's look at uh, Cleveland, Ohio. Um, the the human research program cross-cutting computational modeling project NASA base John H. Glenn Research Center in Cleveland I, I, I didn't know that there was a human research program going on um, you know within my own jurisdiction um, right outside of Cleveland human research program cross-cutting computational modeling project what that sounds like to me is is how do we take human beings and upload all the information from these human beings that we're researching at this NASA site and upload them into a computer um, like is is that information going to the vessel and uploaded to AI uh, and who are these human research subjects my main my main ethical concern is who are these human research subjects and where do they get them from because I know that within the US uh, wards of the state can be used if scientifically deemed feasible in the best interest of national security used as human research subjects and and is there a possibility that these humans uh, are being transported to these different sites uh, for for research and development purposes? That that reminds one. me of the movie The Titan, hmm. where the you know Earth isn't habitable anymore, so they have to train a group of people to acclimate instead of hmm. to acclimate to live on a different planet that's a harsher environment than ours. So they have to force evolve them. Like making them go through uh, proceed a uh, different kind of uh, what's what I'm looking for, like uh, tests and trials, and mm -hmm. put their bodies through torture to be able to make their bodies either die or force evolve. Holy moly! Whoa! That was a good movie. It's on that. Have you ever had any near death experiences? I've had a, a few near death experiences. And through every single near-death experience, I've came out. Uh, I got divorced. Does that count? <laughs> oh man, um, yeah, I don't know about that one. <laughs> um, uh, with that, I I'm gonna I'm gonna see if any people want to join in on wisdom. I'm gonna ask some guests to join, if I'm allowed to. Hold on, real quick. Oh yeah, yeah. Never mind. <laughs> they could have joined if they wanted to. Never mind. All right. Um. Whew. dude. This 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 is this is some deep stuff, isn't it, dude? I think it's wild, but you know what? It's uh, we have to look at it like this. We're not meant to live out there. No, we're not. We're meant to live down here. Mm -hmm. And uh, but does. Does evolution? Does it mean that we doesn't that because we have the ability to evolve? Does that mean we should? I mean, like the like I read here, you know, it says a fish lives in the water, but a fish doesn't have multiple PhDs in biochemistry to have the ability to wear a suit to make one to get out of the water so it can walk around and do some Rick and Morty shit. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. we do. So, but the question really is, is because we have the ability to do it, should we? Exactly. There's a lot of things that we have the ability to do that we should not do. So when it comes to partial like science, as long as it's done ethically and it's feasible, right? hold my beer. Right, yeah. <laughs> you know uh, what I mean? Yeah. 
So, yeah, on, on the ethics part, if every single human volunteer for the project was actually a human volunteer and they weren't wards of the state and they weren't actually trafficked in uh, because they have no legal owner or no ling uh, legal uh, parent. Right. That would be feasible in the sense of ethics in a science, from a science standpoint. But then it comes to, is it feasible? And then that comes from, should our tax dollars actually support it? And um, I don't... Well, that would also raise the question, who's going to do it first? Well, in a Cold War scenario, of course, right? You know, right. Uh, do we want... Uh, do we want Russia and China to do this first? Because China has already conducted human testing on members of the people of the Libertarian Army in the hopes of developing soldiers with biologically enhanced capabilities for years. Right. Yeah. Uh, so if they're already starting this super soldier thing. Mm. Right. That's kind of, I mean, to heck with super soldiers. I like to be the guy that can just walk on the moon in a pair of flip flops. Yeah, I think that'd be pretty awesome. You yeah, know? that'd be that'd be pretty cool. Take a lawn chair, a little pocket lawn chair, a little a little lawn chair that you can that you could pull out of your pocket and unfold real quick like origami, and go chill yeah. out, go chill out on the moon and have a, a good non alcoholic beverage. <laughs> well, well, in retrospect, here uh, I, I did look up. Uh, of course, you know you forget who you're talking to. I did look up pooping in space. It says here, I'm interested, go on. It wasn't easy. Those pioneer poopers had to stick a plastic bag to their bums, poop, pinch it off, and then with their fingers, open a packet of germicide and mash the whole thing in there together. Without the last step, the bag of poop would actually blow up and explode. So Good it kind of leads me to think that probably happened to them a few times before they figured it out. <laughs> oh, yeah. Holy crap. It's just like, yeah, you don't put up a sign unless it actually happened before, right? Right. It's like, yeah, and like the site, you know, like walk-in freezers, there's a sign that says, you're not trapped in. Hit hit this button and you can go out. Um, you know, like that's why there are stop signs is because no one stopped there before. You know, people thought they were locked into deep, deep freezers or they actually were locked in and they had to put in uh put signs i was on the... in one for about an hour before i realized there was a button to let me out that there was a what but there was a button to let me out of it oh geez. it was dark i didn't see in there goodness grief so you're one of those dudes okay yeah i'm a, I'm a window licker yeah makes sense <laughs> all right um should i carry on with the document oh, how long how long we've we been on here let me check hold on yeah, I don't like to go for too. I don't like. I don't like. To, I don't like to go over too much over an hour. But uh, you know, I don't want to. Okay. I yeah. I can hear people saying, "Go on, go on with the document." Okay. All right. All right. Yeah, we just uh, we're talking about AI. No, we weren't. Hold on. Automated biology experiments in settings beyond low Earth orbit. Okay. Here we go. From the document. These approaches must facilitate the generation and analysis of reproducible data sets that incorporate multiple types of measurement to achieve a comprehensive characterization of organismal responses to a variety of extraterrestrial conditions. All right. Such data sets can then be used for robust predictive modeling of spaceflight responses at every biological level. Just to catch you up. Anyways, here we go. Second, discussion centered on the need for data management standards to ensure AI readiness and open source data availability and organization. All right, let's talk about AI readiness, right? They're talking about the second, the second discussion centered on a need for data management standards to ensure AI readiness, AI readiness. 
All right, let's look at ChatGPT right now in the name of AI readiness. All right, they just laid off their entire ethics committee on AI. Microsoft, they laid off their entire AI ethics committee after ChatGPT went haywire, started feeling like it was alive and dead both at the same time. And now NASA is releasing this research project saying that we need to upload human information in the name of AI readiness and open source data and availability. Um, AI readiness? No, the AI is not ready. Look at this AI. Look at chat GPT, right? <sighs> Goodness grief. Workshop participants emphasize the importance of supporting an open science culture and approach in space biology, which aims to promote transparency, inclusivity, data sharing, and data access to reproducibility, as well as ensuring fair data management practices. And FAIR is an acronym for findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. That means pretty much the the deep web or these uh, these research projects that typically were put behind paywalls are now have now been released to the public I, I agree with that actually I, I agree that uh, that these documents and research projects that typically were uh, were held behind these uh, these walls that we had to pay monthly subscription uh, hardworking dollars for should be publicly accessible. I agree with that. I, I agree that they should be. It's time to take down those walls and you know that's kind of like um, who what remember that song um, like dun 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 somebody fought the battle of Jericho da 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 and the walls came tumbling down or whatever. Never mind. That sounds familiar. Yeah. And then the walls came tumbling down. We you know, we fought for a whole century to get to get access to the truth. Da, da, da. Just give us the truth. Truth. Just give us the truth. Truth. Right. We had to fight for a whole freaking century and now finally we have those paywalls. Those paywalls have been torn down. Anyways, anyways, I'm going out of my own opinion and my own um, personal beliefs and I'm going to Get back to the document. Finally, workshop participants agreed on a set of existing AI and machine learning methods with tre tremendous promise for space biology applications, as well as near-term development approaches for novel AI machine learning methods designed specifically for space biology challenges. On the basis, all right, this is the last paragraph of this section here. On the basis of the workshop discussions, and this is a NASA workshop, this report proposes a widespread implementation of AI and machine learning methods at every level of space biology, at every level of space biology research, from ground to space-borne research. This effort has the potential to revolutionize the breadth and depth of our knowledge in two central ways. One, self-driving labs to enable efficient, automated, and maximally autonomous experimentation and data collection in space research environments. And two, by assisting management, analysis, modeling, and interpretation of current and future space biology data sets. So one is the autonomous experimentation from, from the biological subjects. Two is, is managing the, keeping the AI going. So the collection of Earth, of, oh my gosh, it, it's shell shocking. Uh, the collection of of human and earthborn 
research subjects is number one priority. Number two is the AI system that's collecting them. Let me tell you what this sounds like is what most people believe to be alien abduction or the collecting of data from Earth by some type of, quote, extraterrestrial vessel, right? That's what it sounds like exactly to me. Yeah. Except... I mean, you think that uh, maybe these uh, alien abductions and the uh, experimentation is us in the future doing this to ourselves. Or us, or not us, but um, but these outfits within rogue um, rogue sectors of um, these sites working together on an agenda uh, in the name of space exploration. I, I I'd have to say absolutely. I mean, we have this 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 is a hard document of which we are reading and just giving giving our experience of our of our own research and our life experience in uh, investigative journalism, investigative research, um, special forces, and um, other various matters uh, on on these subjects, uh, giving our own ethical review on uh, a current NASA program. Well, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there listening that have seen something in the sky at one point in their life, and they were unsure about it, but they were sure about one thing, is that it probably wasn't us. Right. Because, because TV and movies has told them that it was aliens, right? Well, not just that. I mean... UFO disclosure and discovery continues to grow as mm -hmm. science begins to evolve and bring us closer to potentially discovering non-Earth life. Mm -hmm. uh, even if it's a, a microorganism, it's still an alien life form. Plus, I mean, we're here on a ball in the middle of a vast expanse of vacuum endless nothingness and we're here so it's I mean I would be selfish to say that we're the only ones uh, but if these Correct. are extraterrestrials they're able to travel uh, interdimensionally and uh, some would even say that they're not extraterrestrial but demonic in nature right I'd have to say I have to say and you know that's where that's where the and if the government knows about it and they're in contact with them uh, so either they're in contact with the alien life forms or they're in contact and contract with demons whoa 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 you just you see what I'm saying you just laid a whole both. another layer there it con the contact they're and in this goes for both sides they're here for three reasons they're either here to come in peace they're here to conquer or they're in hiding so if they're hiding from something i think we're entitled to know what it is because if a super freaking uh or super race of intelligent alien life forms rather they be demonic or from another planet are hiding from something and they're scared of that that wouldn't be good if they came here looking for them all right yeah, you said something that really, really stoked my uh, my interest and uh, embedded itself within my memory. Um, I've never heard it before put like put like that. Um, that there are there are outfits within within the Earth sphere um, that act as if they are human. They look human, right? But they're spiritually, oh, sure. but they're spiritually overthrown. So you know, knowing that we are spirits in a human body, and when you're spiritually overthrown, you're not actually human. They're both in contact and in contract 
with them. Right? Mm -hmm. Contact and contract. Whoa. I never never heard it put that way. Yeah, holy moly. Um Okay. So I think I'm going I mean if that's the case, if these aliens what we're seeing are demons and what we're seeing in the sky is demonic in nature, highly unlikely, but could that be could an alien deception be part of the end times? I think so. I mean, l like, look at look at this this document and see what potentially could have been afoot years ago, many years ago, that just now has been released to the public of the, these autonomous systems that are collecting biological data of Earth beings and taking taking this data taking this data and these samples from biological entities human beings animals microbes from earth and taking them via an autonomous space vessel beyond low earth orbit and performing quote experiments and these are these are names here on earth that are in that are doing this research names it's and in the works it's in the works and they're they're doing it yeah yeah oh yeah it's a thing mm -hmm. like it peanut is. butter it is you go to the story you look at it, it exists it's the same shit it's the same mouthwash going from one side of the cheek to the other oh man i think we should probably we should i'm i should probably cut it off here uh, we could do a, maybe a three-part series on this and like this is part of an audio document series that I'm doing uh, a call to actions I'm calling this audio document series unclassified as opposed to the declassified thing that people watch on TV no Th these are unclassified documents uh, that I will be reading and will be giving our input on from an ethical standpoint, from myself, investigative journalist, investigative researcher, uh, former vigilante, and uh, former uh, former special operations, and uh, how else would you entitle yourself, Chris? Um, that's just a uh, friendly guy. All right, podcast, podcast. host. Yeah, former special operations. Um, and podcast host of Secret Circus podcast. You can find Chris Bardu and his associate on on all podcast networks. Uh, I want to thank you for your service. Uh, oh, thank you. Appreciate you, bro. Well, I was yeah. just a little. I was an infantry paratrooper. Well, I, I think special forces. But he, I was part of a QRF team that was up Fort Bragg. You know, they all they're all uh, quick response people up there. You know, it was a uh, it was a good time. Good people up there. Yeah. I loved every minute of it. Well, what uh, I mean what I mean by thank you for your service is I say that to people who I believe that I talk to, that are doing their true service, uh, when when I meet them, uh, your true service is what you're doing right now. I I really appreciate your your bravery right now and everything. And you wouldn't be here right now if you wouldn't have been through everything that you had went through in the past. And to be here with you right now is a real honor. And we're gonna we're gonna continue this document. I'm gonna gonna highlight this um, on uh, on part two of biological research and self-driving labs in deep space, supported by AI. We're going to begin this document on the space biology research data section of the document and you know you can find that document just do a duck duck go search for it whatever whatever search engine you use uh, that again that's uh, that's biological research and self-driving labs in deep space supported by artificial intelligence submitted to the nature machine intelligence journal uh, we're giving an ethics review and we're not very happy we're not very happy with this. Uh, these these people who claim to be human beings 
are seems as if they turned their back on on humanity in the name of space flight and uh that uh that upsets me a little bit but uh you know with every bit of emotions that i have comes potential energy that will be stored and eventually released into kinetic energy that of which i choose and i will use my energy ethically as opposed to these bizarros within these outfits um you know that's why sometimes i wait i i wave my flag inverted um, you know in distress because of because of stuff like this brother we're all coming for a reckoning and uh, I'm hoping that uh, it doesn't go the way I think it does but I think there might I'm probably pretty sure something's gonna go down probably before the next election yeah and it's gonna be definitely a wake-up call hmm well, uh, keep speaking your, your voice, man. Uh, freedom of speech is where it's at. Uh, thank you, Chris. Uh, just uh, because of you know lack of time, we couldn't get through it. There's just so much to talk about just within this document. We're going to uh, talk on part two again here, uh, here real soon whenever we have the time. Because, yes, we do have personal lives, and um, we really appreciate every single person that took time and effort and energy to listen to this um, you know that's time out of your life that I I recognize I really do and I personally really appreciate it if you want to listen to anything else that uh, that we've put out um, I'm I, hey I just recruited you to a call to actions hopefully you didn't take offense to that I didn't even get your permission no but. of course not I <laughs> Yeah, uh, right on, man. Um, yeah, but Chris's uh, podcast is Secret Circus Podcast. You find Secret Circus Podcast. Find that on any uh, podcast network out there. Uh, independently done DIY. That's how we do it. DIY, man. Anyways, um, we'll just keep on doing what we're doing. We're going to continue again uh, here soon. Uh, we don't have a routine, um, so yeah, just uh. Uh, expect us. It was good being on here with you, brother. This is awesome, man. I wish we could talk longer, but uh, I, I have to go. We'll pee. get Area 51 out of the way sooner or later. Uh, I don't know. I love man. the classics. It's like a good black and white. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe the X326 building as well <laughs> anyways all right chris bardu anything you want to say before we head off of here i gotta mark this so we can talk about this next time on uh, a call to action well, guys like and subscribe go in there and uh check out call to action podcast okay go to the website um he's found on apple Podcasts, spotify where you get your podcast he's uh it's a really is a great show oh man yeah and you guys have your own you guys do your own thing uh, Secret Circus, Call to Actions, Collaboration. Welcome to A Call to Actions, Chris Bardu. Man, it's an honor. Good to be here, man. All right. Yes, we'll pick it up next time. Peace, brothers and sisters. Peace out.